Spanish citizenship and European citizenship in just two years. Who qualifies and should you do it? Is it a great idea or a terrible idea? Let's find out. Spain is one of those countries that thinks they're better than they actually are. A lot of Spanish citizens want to get the heck out of Spain. They're tired of paying too much in taxes, but a lot of people are interested in getting Spanish citizenship. They do have their Spain golden visa, which attracts some investors, not that many, mainly from China and Russia. The Portugal golden visa, in my opinion, is much better. It takes 10 years to become a Spanish citizen through naturalization, even if you do the golden visa, it takes you 10 full years to become a citizen. You can shortcut that 10 years into just two years. The way faster shortcut is to get married to a Spanish citizen. That is one year. We're going to talk about the two year mark. Who qualifies? The first thing is anybody that is a citizen of a country that was dominated by Spain in the past, any Latin American country, including Brazil as well. So you're talking South America, Central America, some countries in the Caribbean as well can qualify. And Puerto Rico also qualifies, even though it is a territory of the United States. If you were born in Puerto Rico and can prove that you were born in Puerto Rico, then you get Spanish citizenship. That's how I found out about it. That's how I researched into it and how I learned that it was a terrible idea to go through this process. But let's find out first what are the requirements to actually get it. If you're born in any of these countries, if you're a citizen of Argentina, Mexico, El Salvador, Brazil, Puerto Rico, any of these places, even if you're a US citizen born in Puerto Rico, as long as you can show that you were born there, if you show a nationality of one of these countries, you can easily get the citizenship in about two years. In reality, it takes about three years to get the citizenship. So two years of living and then 12 months of processing. I've talked to many lawyers in Spain in order to find out if this was a good idea for me. And it really takes three years. You can easily get a visa or a residence permit to live in Spain through the non-lucrative visa. It is basically the non-economic activity visa in Spain. You just show some money in the bank account, show that you can take care of yourself. Around 40 something thousand euro, you just put it in a bank account. You show that you can take care of yourself and that's it. You don't have the right to work in Spain, but for you that you're watching this channel, probably that doesn't matter. So you can just go to Spain, live there two years. As long as you live six months per year or more, you can get the citizenship really quickly. But here's the big but. That's what stopped me. The taxes in Spain and the Spanish tax system is one of the worst in the world. A lot of people say they're the worst taxes in the European Union. I don't know if I would say that, but definitely the taxes are very high and they are very aggressive at pursuing people that want to become non-tax residents of Spain. So first look, let's first look at the capital gains. If you really want to go to Spain and you actually want to pursue this, or maybe you're thinking about your kids later on pursuing this, have them be born in a Latin American country and then become Spanish citizens. So first off, the capital gains tax. Right now, the minimum you'll pay in capital gains is about 19%. Then it goes up to about 21% and then it goes up to about 23% after 50,000 euros. So you're looking at a 23% tax rate on your crypto, which compared to short term capital gains in the US is not that bad. 23%. Yes, it's not zero. It's not five, but at least it's not 37 or 39 like in the US. Now, personal income tax. This is where it really hurts. I did an analysis on myself with an accountant and I would be paying around 49.5% personal income tax, which is nuts. 50% of my income go straight to Spain, which is, is quite crazy. But that's essentially what you're going to pay. You're going to pay between 46% all the way up to 51% tax, depending on which region of Spain, which city of Spain you live in. Some regions charge you an extra municipality tax or so on. So you'll probably pay around 50%. Let's call it that in all of your taxes. So you're giving away half your money. If you're doing crypto, if you're doing capital gains, if you're doing all this, you're paying about 23% of your crypto gains, of all of your gains. And then if you choose the wrong city, they have a wealth tax. I've talked about this before where Spain imposes wealth taxes on people living in different parts, except the capital in Madrid. So you're looking at paying, let's say 50% personal income tax, 23% tax on your capital gains, plus one or 2% wealth tax if you are a really high net worth individual. So you're paying a lot of money, imagine. If you live there, let's say two years or three years, how much is the citizenship worth? If you're making a million and a half, two million per year, let's say, and then you have a million a year in 
crypto gains or capital gains tax. So you're, you're making a million a year, let's say a million, you're paying 500 grand in taxes, then you're doing about 230,000 in crypto gains or crypto gains tax or capital gains tax, whatever. So you're already at 730,000 per year. And then let's say that you live in a city that is not Madrid and you get the wealth tax, then you're paying an extra 10, 20 grand, whatever it is, or even more, let's say 50 grand. So you're paying about 800 grand a year for three consecutive years. We're talking about $2.4 million in taxes to become a Spanish citizen. And then to get out of the Spanish tax system, it is a problem. I was talking to a lot of accountants that say that Spain necessitates or they want another tax residence somewhere else. So I could, for example, come to Dubai, get tax residence in Dubai, and then with my Spanish citizenship, become a non-tax payer of Spain, but they won't make it that easy. They'll probably charge an exit tax. They'll probably make the process really hard. Overall, it's just an absolute headache. And I've heard a lot of people here on YouTube talk about, oh, Spain sucks for taxes. It's true. It really sucks. So is this a good idea for a high net worth individual? No, absolutely not. Yes, you can get it in two to three years. If you're from a country that doesn't have a good passport, maybe you wanna go and live in Spain, but you'll be paying a lot of taxes. Better do the Portugal Golden Visa. If you actually wanna live in Portugal, you can get the NHR. You don't even need to live there. You can live there seven days, 14 days per year. Not pay any taxes and then get the passport in about five to six years. Yes, you need to make an investment, but compare the example that I was talking about, 2.4 million in taxes paid versus let's say 500K in investment that you can then get after five or six years. So the Portugal deal is way better than the Spanish deal in this case. So for everybody that's looking at, maybe you have a Latin American passport, maybe you were born in a Latin American country, maybe your kids were born in Puerto Rico, something like this, and you're thinking, oh, let's get Spanish citizenship this way. Consider that they have one of the highest tax rates in the world. They do have a very aggressive tax system. To get out, it's gonna be really hard. And then the process does take more than two years. So don't think, oh, I'm gonna pay taxes two years and get the heck out, or not make income for two years and then get out. It usually takes longer than that. With the bureaucracy in Spain, it can even take four years for you to get your passport. So yes, it's true. You can get citizenship in two years. In practice, not the best program out there. If you want help getting European citizenship or any other citizenship by investment or by donation, I can help with all of that. If you're looking at moving abroad, lowering your taxes, discussing these different tax scenarios, which are really hard to discuss with anybody. I did a ton of research and because I speak Spanish, I actually got to meet accountants in Spain, talked about all these processes. If you wanna to talk to someone that knows what they're talking about, obviously I'm not a tax advisor or a legal professional, but I can help you with all my experience and all the information that I've gathered throughout the years. Go to wealthyexpat.com slash apply, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Let's discuss your particular case. Let's see if I can help you. And if you want to check what countries offer citizenship right now, if you're looking for a second citizenship, maybe through investment, through donation, what are all of the options that you have? Check out the video that is going to pop up right here. The top 10 countries to buy a passport or buy citizenship by investment. Check it out right now. It's going to be really insightful. Subscribe, hit that notification bell and that like button down below. If you enjoy this video, I will see you on the next one.